let's discuss the metabolic portion of the mdx 2022 and uh, these mcqs are very important and the crisp concept about the endocrinology and the metabolic portion is very important to solve any scenario in the exam so to start with uh, a five-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department by the ambulance after he had a generalized tonic clonic seizures presenting complaint is your seizures which was at home 20 minutes ago Upon arrival to hospital, he is assessed immediately. He is not having the seizure now, but he is lethargic and confused. Maybe he is in post-ictal state right now and uh, no active seizure is present. His blood pressure is 105 by 65, which is absolutely normal. A pulse rate is 76 beats per minute and the respiratory rate is 16 breaths per minute. And the temperature is 37, so temperature is also normal. Our metabolic profile is uh, uh, vital signs are basically normal. His mucous membranes are not dry and the skin turgor is normal and capillary refill is 2 seconds which is uh, showing that the patient is not in dehydration. So there is no signs of dehydration in this patient and the blood pressure was also normal. That was a clue for the normal uh, fluid level of this patient. The rest of the examination show cardiovascular, respiratory, neurological examination completely normal and the pathology results are as follows. Among the lab findings you can see there is just the hyponatremia which is uh, uh, pretty much evident from the lab results otherwise all the labs are normal so in the case of hyponatremia whenever the uh, your hyponatremia or hyponatremia or any metabolic derangement can cause your lethargy confusion and seizures so this patient is presenting with see, presenting complaint seizure is due to this hyponatremia so uh, whenever there is a question about the hyponatremia the next things uh, you should establish is that whether there is the uh, hypervolemic hyponatremia whether this is hypovolemic hyponatremia or it is uvolemic hyponatremia so we are very much clear that this is not hyponatremic uh, hypovolemic hyponatremia because the skin turgor was absolutely normal capillary refill time was absolutely normal patient is not in dehydration and the blood pressure is also normal so this is not hypovolemic next comes uh, if if whether it's hypervolemic hyponatremia uh, hypervolemia there should be a sign of hypernatremia in the case of uh, pulmonary edema or the periorbital edema or in the case of puffiness or in the case of fluid retention in the body in the case of limb swelling there this is not in this scenario the physical examination was absolutely normal in this patient so we are left with the uvolemic hypernatremia in this case Whenever we talk about the uvolemic hypernatremia, the most important cause, especially in the case of children, as the child is only uh, the five years old boy, the most important cause is SIADH. So uh, if we just rule out the options, acute renal failure, there was no uh, sequelae or signs of the renal failure in this patient. Addison's disease, there should be some abnormality of metabolic derangement in Addison's disease. In the, uh, along with the hyponatremia, there should be low blood pressure or in the form of hyperkalemia. So Addison's is not the answer here. Congestive heart failure will present with some respiratory finding in the form of shortness of breath or capitations or the fluid retention in the body hyponatremia due to dehydration skin turgor was normal so dehydration is not the answer here so only option left is syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion so uh, syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion we have uh, just read that the afebrile seizures in the patient can be a variety of causes it can be there it can be neurological it can be metabolic Neurological causes can be divided into infectious in the form of meningitis, encephalitis, or space of opanglion or any tumor. Or metabolic cause can be in the form of hypernatremia, hyponatremia, in the form of hypoglycemia, and the hypercalcemia or uremia. So these are all the causes of the afebrile seizures in the child. So uh, as I have already discussed that the hyponatremia, you have to establish whether it is hypervolemic, hypovolemic or uvolemic. We have already discussed it. The causes of hypernatremia can be metabolic in the form of diuretics, ACE inhibitor, ARBs and the form of dehydration, SIADH and again congestive heart failure, renal failure, liver failure, which was all the options in our scenario. So when we talk about the a, uh, ADH, uh, syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, what happens is basically the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, there is a, a variety of causes of the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. It can be caused by the malignancy. The most important is your uh, small cell carcinoma of the lung. This is very important. And among the drugs, this is carbamazepine, SSRI, amitriptyline, morphine. Drug can be remembered by this mnemonic. SIADH cannot void. This is a very important and uh, easy mnemonic to remember for drugs causing SIADH. This is S for SSRI, I for endomethacine, A for antidepressant, D for diuretic, H for haloperinol, can not for cyclophosphamide, carbamazepine, and word for vincrescin. So this is a very easy mnemonic to remember the SIADH. Among other causes of SIADH can be in the form of brain injury, meningitis, aberechnoid hemorrhage, and infective pneumonia, and cerebral abscess, and hypothyroidism. So these two diagrams summarize all of your topic or all of the causes uh, that were very lo long list of the causes of the uh, drugs causing SIADH or uh, different causes of the SIADH in this patient.
Next, we move on. A 14-year-old girl presents to your clinic with a complaint of significant fatigue and the dark rash in the axilla. So, our chief complaint is basically the fatigue lethargy and the dark rash, which can be uh, which can be diagnosed at the case of acanthosis nigricans in this patient. And, and it is also present in the around the neck. So, it is uh, again acanthosis nigricans and acanthosis nigricans most of the time in young patient is due to increased insulin resistance. So, uh, this the two com main complaint uh, here are lethargy and insulin resistance, acanthosis nigricans. Her menses are regular and the family history is also notable for the type 2 diabetes in the grandmother. On examination, the BMI is 32, which is uh, much higher uh, than the age of this patient. She is just 14-year-old girl with a 32-year BMI, 32 uh, BMI. And the blood pressure is 120 by 80. She has also abdominal striae, which of the following could be the most likely diagnosis. So if we just rule out the uh, different causes of this MCQ, Cushing syndrome always present with the increased hypertension or uh, there, there will be some different uh, examination finding as well in the form of abdominal striae. Yeah, this is, a, uh, this is a feature of Cushing syndrome, but it, there can be a buffer harm for the um, uh, thin extremities or the, the, there's, there can be another features of the Cushing syndrome as well. But the normal blood pressure is against our Cushing syndrome. So this is not the option of right answer. Edison's disease again it presents with some metabolic derangement in the form of hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, or low blood pressure. Again, the blood pressure uh, just uh, rule out your Edison's disease. Metabolic syndrome, yes, metabolic syndrome can be a possibility because metabolic syndrome has different components in the form of W E I G H T. Just remember this mnemonic metabolic syndrome, remember the mnemonic weight in the form of waste expansion insulin um, uh, there is uh, insulin uh, impaired glucose hypertension and triglycerides and uh, hdl are also uh, deranged so we have uh, waste expansion she is obese so weight waste expansion is there impaired glucose in the form of insulin resistance is there hypertension is not there but yes she is uh, 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 she is two of the three criteria are should be there so she is there should be uh, some investigation to rule out the metabolic syndrome in this patient Polycystic ovarian syndrome, again her uh, periods was absolutely normal so polycystic ovarian syndrome is just ruled out in this case. So we are just left with the metabolic syndrome on the basis of rule of exclusion so we will go for the metabolic syndrome in this uh, scenario. Next comes um, uh, the justification of this MCQ is basically uh, this is your MCQ obesity and dark skin is the acanthosis nigricans suggestive of insulin resistance which is present in lethargy and fatigue whenever a young patient presents with lethargy and fatigue always consider as Edison's disease and differential and you have to rule out the Edison's disease uh, so Edison's and Cushing is very important these are the important picture. Edison's always present with a bronze-like pigmentation. The pigmentation is very, very important features of this Edison's disease. They always present with a very lethargic. You can see this lethargic old lady uh, in the form of hypoglycemia, postural hypotension, weight loss, GI disturbances, weakness. So everything is going to be low in these patients of the Edison's disease. So in the form of Edison's crisis, whenever there is an Edison's crisis, there is going to be profound fatigue, dehydration, vascular collapse can be there due to decreased BP and the renal shutdown. And again, the metabolic derangement is hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. So these are all the features of the Edison's disease. On the other hand, if we talk about the Cushing syndrome, Cushing syndrome has a very particular uh, features which can be uh, remembered by this picture. So they have moon-like faces and the CNS irritability uh, opposite to the Edison's disease. This is hypoglycemia and these patients are going to have hyperglycemia. So these are the uh, differences of uh, your Edison's disease and your Cushing syndrome. So uh, next uh, most important thing uh, uh, to remember about this uh, Edison's disease and Cushing syndrome is that uh, again, uh, the Cushing syndrome presents with the thin extremities and the abdominal obesities uh, and uh, your um, uh, GI disturbances can be there, there can be amenorrhea but again the very important uh, feature which was not mentioned in this uh, case that the Edison's disease always present with your hypertension not uh, uh, normal blood pressure and the Edison's disease present with a hypotension so this is a clue that the Cushing syndrome presents with the increased blood pressure and Edison's syndrome plus presents with the decreased blood pressure this is an important thing to remember uh, to rule out the MCQs. Next, uh, next option was your hypothyroidism. Again, hypothyroidism does not present with acanthosis nigricans, so this was a silly MCQ option. Edison's disease we have just ruled out on the basis of their uh, picture. So these are again the uh, features of the Cushing syndrome. Uh, th this is an important concept as well. What is the difference between the Cushing syndrome and the Cushing disease? Cushing syndrome is uh, whenever the endocrine disorder in which the cortisol levels are too high in the body. So these are the number of underlying causes. They can be adrenal, they can be pituitary, they can be corticosteroid use. This 
इज अ कुशिंग सिंड्रोम बट वेन एवर द डिजीज इज कॉज बाय द पिच्यूट्री पिच्यूट्री इज योर कल्परेट देन दिस इज कॉल्ड डिजीज सो पिच्यूट्री इन्वॉलमेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू फॉर इट टू बी कॉल्ड एज कुशिंग डिजीज so next we talk about uh, edison's disease if you are not uh, remembering the, uh, by that picture then you can remember the mnemonic as well for the steroid sugar is low tired and weakness electrolyte imbalance in the form of high potassium and low sodium reproductive changes hypotension increased skin pigmentation and dyrenosia so these are all the causes of your steroid or edison's disease next we talk about the metabolic syndrome we have already discussed the metabolic syndrome by this mnemonic weight weight is for waist expanded in the form of uh, 37 inches in the form of male and 31 inches in the form of female impaired glucose which is a part fasting blood glucose greater than 5.5 mmol per liter you should remember the both units 5.5 mmol or 100 uh, mg per deciliter both are important hypertension uh, greater than 130 by 85 triglyceridemia greater than 1.7 mmol per liter and decreased hdl if male less than 10, 1 is significant in the case of female less than 1.3 is significant so this is an important criteria of metabolic syndrome next we are discussing a 14 year old girl presents to your clinic with a dark rash in the axilla this is more or less the same scenario as we have discussed earlier that the young girl presenting with a dark rash in the axilla around the neck so this is an acanthosis nigricans pa uh, patient due to insulin resistance increase insulin resistance is the cause here she also complain of fatigue and lethargy again the complaint is also same she has normal period which is ruling out the pcos on examination the bmi is 32 uh, same obese lady uh, the blood pressure is 120 by 80 which is ruling out your edison's disease which is ruling out your cushing syndrome she has abdominal stria which is indicating your obesity which of which of the following investigation is likely to establish the cause so this can be tricky mcqs uh, first he was asking about the diagnosis which was a metabolic syndrome and again the metabolic syndrome scenario he is asking about the investigation so we have just read the criteria the part of the criteria was your fasting blood glucose so fasting blood blood glucose is going to be the answer here because other uh, the other uh, investigations which is cortisol or acth which is, which is indicated for the cushing syndrome is not the right answer here hypothyroidism has nothing to do with the acanthosis nigricans pcos for pelvic ultrasound uh, hermensis is normal so are no, we are not going for the pco so uh, only option left to the metabolic syndrome fasting blood glucose is here the girl bmi of 34 obese acanthosis nigricans lethargy fatigue all pointing towards your metabolic syndrome of not oral glucose tolerance is more sensitive than the fasting blood glucose this is an important uh, concept or important mcq as well if you find two options what uh, oral glu glucose tolerance test which is ogtt and fasting blood glucose then you have to choose the ogtt this is uh, again an important uh, mcq can be there PCOS we have just ruled out we have done all these things so metabolic syndrome twenty five percent of the metabolic syndrome also present with the PCOS so these can be overlapping syndromes this is a criteria for your PCOS PCOS present with the three symptom mainly hyperandrogenism polycystic ovary zone ultrasonography and odigo or an ovulation so these are the three important criteria for your PCOS. Next comes a 64 year old man is brought to the emergency department with confusion he is an old age man he is presenting with the confusion he is known case of hypertension and the heart failure on indapamide indapamide is what it's a thyroid like diuretic thyroid diuretic also causes your um, a metabolic derangements so this can cause hyperkalemia or hyponatremia and hyponatremia can cause confusion as well next comes uh, Uh, and in upper in alapril which is an ace inhibitor ace inhibitors also causes your hyponatremia so we uh, he this patient is taking two drug which are culprit for the hyponatremia and we all know that the hyponatremia can cause your cns symptoms in the form of confusion in the form of lethargy we have just read that uh, and he is next he is uh, uh, giving the sim uh, this levels that which is very much evident that the, there is hyponatremia 120 mm uh, millimole per liter which of the following would be the most appropriate next step in the management so he's asking about the management of, of this patient next step in the management uh, he is not asking about the definitive diagnosis he is not uh, asking about the most important modality he is just asking about the next step in the management so with hyponatremia Uh, you have to establish whether it is acute hyponatremia or it's chronic hyponatremia most of the time chronic hyponatremia do not present with the symptoms because the patient is used to that uh, uh, metabolic abnormality acute hyponatremia always present with the symptoms and the symptoms most of the time are your neurological symptoms in the form of cns disorders as i have already discussed that the hyponatremia or decreased sodium you have to establish whether it's increased fluid whether it's decreased fluid or it's normal fluid in the form of euvolemia so 
our patient there is no sequelae of hyper or hypovolemia so we uh, we are just considering him to be uvolemia in this patient and acutely presenting hyponatremia should be treated should be treated so in this patient we have to uh, treat the patient with a hypertonic saline uh, they, because this can be very dangerous for this patient again we have just discussed it that the hyponatremia can be uvolemic hyponatremia hyponatremic and the hyponatremic and they present with a lethargy confusion seizures coma and even death there can be a number of causes of this hyponatremia in the form of drugs like ACT, AS, uh, ACE inhibitors ARBs diuretics dehydration SIADH we, we, we have discussed it very much detail and congestive heart failure renal failure liver failure and Addison's disease and hypothyroidism these are all the causes of your hyponatremia we have established that the diagnosis is hyponatremia then you have to look that the whether it's mild hyponatremia or it's severe hyponatremia so you should be very clear in mind that what are the symptoms of your severe hyponatremia these are three indications or these three symptoms are for uh, severe hyponatremia severe hyponatremia presents in the form of confusion seizures and coma whenever these three symptoms are present in the patient like in our patient he was confused so uh, this patient should be treated with the hypertonic saline this is the indication for the hypertonic saline or if the patient is just mild hyponatremia then he can be managed with the fluid restriction so these are the two different modality response to the cessation of medication applied if hyponatremia is delayed depend upon the half life of drug so stopping the drug is not a wise decision and the mild hyponatremia can be treated with the fluid restriction but in our case there is an uh, confusion present so this is a, a severe hyponatremia and should be treated with a hypertonic saline another important concept is that if the children is presenting with a lethargy which is not an important indication in the form of adults but in children if it, he is presenting with a lethargy this is again an indication for your uh, hypertonic saline so if we talk about the indications of the hypertrophic saline indications of your uh, hypertonic saline then the three or four indications we have just read is your confusion which is your coma and uh, which is seizures in the form of uh, adults this is the indications in adults patients and if we talk about uh, children this is lethargy so these are very clear in our scenario next we talk about uh, which of the following breast diseases has the most uh, associated with the vitamin D deficiency this is a straightforward MCQ no concept is needed there is just rata based MCQ that the ductal carcinoma in situ is associated with the vitamin D deficiency vitamin D deficiency can cause a lot of cancers which can be remembered by the mnemonic PCB PCB is you see you can remember as Pakistan cricket board in the form of P for prostate, C for colon, and D, uh, B for breast cancer. Breast cancer, ductal carcinoma in situ. So these, this should be remembered as such. Next comes a routine examination of 40-year-old women is found to have hypercholesterolemia. So increased cholesterol level is there. She mentions that the, her sister has hypertension. Which of the following is the familial cause of hypercholesterolemia? This is again, no concept is needed. Just a straightforward MCQ that your tendons and thoma are associated with the familial hypercholesterolemia. There are some presentations of the familial hypercholesterolemia in the form of coronary artery disease, in the form of aortic stenosis, in the form of tendons and thoma, in the form of arc, uh, coronis, um, uh, sorry, Cor corneal arcus so these are uh, important causes of uh, important features of familiar hypercholesterolemia which should be remembered as such and that's an autosomal dominant condition therefore it was evident that the heart sister has same problem uh, this is how your corneal, uh, corneal arcus presents uh, this is an important uh, feature which presents in the early uh, in high familial hypercholesterolemia but unfortunately this is not pathognomic uh, for this uh, particular condition but the tendons and thoma these are very uh, particular for this condition they are, these are the pathognomic condition yeah, so uh, this was all about the metabolic mcqs uh, uh, no we are left with one mcq as well four year old boy sudanese boy from the refugee camp is presented with a complaint of irritability and lethargy so he's a young boy very uh, young child he's presenting with irritability and lethargy laboratory assessment is significant for the decreased 25 hydroxy vitamin d he's straight forming giving you the uh, very important thing that he is having lower vitamin d and uh, for uh, which he is having irritability and confusion which of the following can be the cause of the clinical picture of irritability so vitamin d deficiency yeah that cause confusion and uh, irritability vitamin d is a problem seen in the young low socioeconomic status particularly aboriginal uh, australians and the present due to vitamin d deficiency there is going to be hypocalcemia there is going to be decreased calcium absorption and that hypocalcemia is presenting with the irritability and lethargy likewise the hyponatremia 
uh, other options like acute leukemia always present with a fatigue most common presentation is fatigue in acute leukemia anemia presents with a pallor and fatigue and uh, this is not the option right option and in the case of fever normal wbc infection should be there so uh, so absence of fever just uh, rule out your infection this was all about the metabolic uh, mcqs uh, so we have just uh, one file uh, if you can just uh, tell me in the comment section if you want any particular topic to be covered or any guidelines to be covered that would be very much appreciated